So let's get started. We have the Ring Brothers. Mike and Jim, come on out here. You're first. All right, we're going to let them talk about this beautiful car. So who's going to talk? I get stuck. This is a 69 Dodge Charger that uh, Erland, the owner, actually came to us and he really wanted, to, he loves the style of these cars and he did not want to, there's Erland, uh, he, he wanted to keep the car really what it is. Um, he had some great ideas on the car, a lot of subtleties that uh, when we pull this cover off, the back end of this car was shortened two inches. The wheels were pushed forward on the car to get rid of some of the overhang. It's uh, running a new Hemi in it. Um, the wheels are all machined. The HRE did the wheels. We built the uh, hubcaps that look like a stock hubcap, which is proportionate to the wheel. So I really hope Erlen likes this car because he's never seen it. Um, and I'm excited for you to see it, Erlen. And I want to thank BASF uh, for the great products and everything they do. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, you know, it's nervous being around all you people, but I, it's more nervous seeing a guy that's not seen his car and wrote checks like this. But uh, the car is called Defector because it's actually going to be ending up in London. So we'll have two cars in the streets of London. So that's pretty cool for us. Oh, I just want to get the cover off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, are we ready? Here we go. for not only being an amazing sponsor, but an incredible partner in this build. This build would not have happened nearly the way it did without BASS partnership. So thank you guys for your commitment. We, we got asked a lot, why on earth would you bring 90 people together, either male or female, to work on one vehicle? Isn't the product more important than the process? And in this scenario, the product is not more important than the process. This was all about process. Yes, we wanted to build a really awesome truck, and we wanted to make the ASF proud, but this was about these ladies, these 90 women from all over the country, some of whom had zero experience working on cars. Some of them did not know what a ratchet was before they started this project. So it's all about creating opportunities for women in the trades. It's all about attracting new people to our industry. We know that this industry is having a serious trade deficit, with trade programs being canceled all across the country. We know that women make up less than 2% of the industry. So this build was about creating community. It was about creating a sisterhood. It was about inviting people into our industry that are not often welcomed into it. And really just attracting people to the amazing, amazing industry that we have here. So with that, I could talk for hours about this build, but if you want to learn more about it, check out the website. Talk to these ladies, because they're absolutely amazing. And yes, and one of the fun things we did, BASF very graciously allowed us to do a, com a custom color contest. So we made three custom colors and we let you guys vote which color we were going to paint it. And nobody knows what that color is yet. So without further ado, let's do this.
all these cars in this fabulous booth. Thank you all. Now we built this Mustang for Dr. Honda, who lives in Japan. He had two Mustangs in his museum in Japan, and he sent us both Mustangs. One being a 1971 Mach 1 Mustang, the other one being a 2011 Mustang GT. He wanted us to put the entire Mustang GT underneath the 71. So what we did is we actually took the uh, 2011 and we cut the entire body off of that, keeping the firewall and all of the floor pan. We also took and cut all the firewall and the floor pan out of the 71, made it both cars together. The amazing thing was from the firewall to the rear axle line was the exact same dimensions. So we were able to drop that in and weld it into that body so it is a unibody. But I wanted to stretch the wheelbase because I didn't like how long the front overhang was. So we actually stretched the 2011 Mustang wheelbase five inches by pulling the whole front cradle forward and rebuilding everything to fit underneath the car. We made our own shock towers and then what that did was gave us three inches forward on the 71. But I didn't like the front wheel wells or the rear fenders on the 71 Mach 1. So I took 70 fenders off of the Mustang. We took the front wheel lifts and dropped those into the 71 fenders only three inches forward. And we used the rear quarters off of the 71 uh, Fastback to give it the muscle car feel again. We got the rear quarters on there. Then we completely hand fabricated a whole tail section on the car, widening the, rear, the original rear bumper. We took the front bumper, gave it more peak by stretching the nose just in the peak of the Mustang. We took off the fender extensions, bringing the nose back about three inches, pulling the bumper back, peaking it more, and then completely fabricating a new front grille, headlight assembly, and then used later model Mustang, which is actually the same as a Barracuda, driving light underneath, added some splitters to it, and then of course, with all of that 2011 Mustang GT drivetrain underneath, you really have no room to do a deep dish wheel. And the concept for this car was not to make it look like a custom Mustang. What we wanted this car to look like was a factory show car from 1971, keeping the original hard part bumpers that are chrome, and hopefully we made Dr. Honda happy. He has not seen his car yet, just as your customer. But Dr. Honda couldn't make it, but we've got a couple of his uh, friends that are supposed to be here. They just picked up their badges. I don't know if Charlie's here. If Charlie's here, I'd love to uh, say hello to you, but uh, looks like he hasn't made it here yet. So let's go ahead and uncover it. And this is Mach Foose, which was the owner of Dr. Honda's idea for the name. We just turned the, first, the Foose logo up vertically to take place of the one for the Mach 1. Now it's Mach Foose.